Hello, my name is Nathaniel, and I'm aiming to make the OC tournament scene more accessible to beginners. If you're watching this video, you must be refereeing your own match in an upcoming tournament. This video's goal is to make you familiar with the typical match procedure and the rules that come along with it. However, the information provided in this video should be applicable to any tournament. Before your tournament match begins, you should make sure the setting Allow Multiplayer Game Invites from All Users is selected in the settings of your OSU installation. This allows other users to send you invites if they are making it to the lobby for you. If your event has a Discord channel or some other public chat area to connect with your opponent, I highly recommend turning on notifications there too, so you can be contacted in case of emergency. So here, in, for example, in Discord, you can change it to at only mentions so you don't get a bunch of messages. Or you can just make sure that you're looking at Discord. At this point, you should double check that you're ready to play the match. Check if the tournament you're playing in allows warm-ups. If they don't, maybe you should warm up beforehand. Also, don't forget to grab water and stay hydrated as well. Now that you're ready to go, you should find your opponent. Depending on the tournament rules, either you or your opponent will need to create the lobby. For example, in this tournament, if I'm fighting 12th seed in the first division, I would contact this player. First, you should create a match using the MP make command, which generates a tournament match. The format you should use is MP make followed by your username in parentheses with the verses in between and then your opponent's name in parentheses. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll use the admin that always helps run my tournaments, EML. After typing in this command, a multiplayer room will be made. At this point, you should change the match settings in the bottom right depending on what the tournament you are participating in is using. For example, most tournaments will use score v2 rather than score v1, so I can change that setting here. Many tournaments also put on free mods because you'll often have to change the mods that you're using. After you've set up the room, you should click on the generated MP link to save the match history. Saving your match history is useful in the case your opponent no-shows and is disqualified, as well as submitted proof of the match, along with information about each of the songs played. You'll need this for later. The MP link will be generated there, wherever you make the match, and also it is the first message that will be sent in the multiplayer chat room. And you can see there are no maps being played, but it shows that I created the match along with timestamps. Now the room is fully prepared. At this point, you can invite the other player by typing MP invite followed by your opponent's username. As such. If it says user not found, they are likely offline and you can also message them uh, in the public chat room where the tournament is being held, which is often a Discord server. If the player does not show up for a while in either of these messaging areas, you should read the disqualification rules or contact the tournament admin. Once the opponent joins the match, you can use the roll command to roll. Depending on the tournament rules, the winner of the roll will most likely either ban or pick first. Read the rules for your specific tournament to see the orders. You can type roll in any chat area, but please do so in the multiplayer area so your opponent can see what your roll is. So in this case, I roll the 76. I'm going to pretend that I'm my opponent and roll for them. They rolled eight points. So in this case, 76 is greater than eight. So I will win the roll. If the roll is a tie, you should just roll a second time. With that being said, you should go ahead and look at the rules for your specific tournament to see the orders for the picks and bans. Based on the rule, the first player or team to ban will ban a map, meaning that it cannot be played for the duration of the match. For example, if player or team 2 wins the rolls, and these are the rules, as shown on the screen, player or team 1 will ban first, and player or team 2 will ban second. After that, player or team 2 will pick first, and player or team 1 will pick second. If there are multiple bans, check the order in which bans occur in the rules of the tournament. 
One thing to note is some tournaments don't allow what is called double banning and double picking. Double banning is when a player or team bans two or more maps with the same mod combination in a row. For example, if I look at the map pool of one of my previous tourneys, if one team bans hidden, another team bans a no mod, and then the first team that ban bans another hidden, that is not allowed. That is double ban. Additionally, sometimes double picking is not allowed. Double picking is when the same player or team picks two maps with the same mod combination in a row. For example, if player or team 1 picks a hard rock map, player or team 2 picks a hidden map, and then player or team 1 picks a hard rock map again, that is not allowed. That is a double pick. Some rules may have specific rules regarding if no mods are included in this rule, because technically they're not a mod, you should check the tournament rules uh, for clarification on this or contact an admin or the tournament host. With that all out of the way, after the first team picks a map, you are forced to use all the default mods that are mentioned in the rules, as well as the mod listed next to the map. For example, for this tournament, the default mods here are no fail and score v2 which we already set in the lobby earlier in the example. So whatever mod I'm supposed to use, I will also use no fail. So let's say, for example, I pick hard rock two. That means that I would pick this map and I would pick my mods to be hard rock and no fail. However, some exceptions exist, such as a free mod map. Free mod maps generally have a list of mods to choose from, usually hidden or hard rock, and you are forced to use one or both of them. So for example, in this tournament, a previous iteration of one of my tournaments, we used free mod maps. And it says here for free mod maps, you can use hidden, hard rock, or hidden and hard rock. You must use a mod. Read the tournament rules for more information. After all players are ready with the correct mod selected, you may start the song. If a player forgot a mod, the point is invalid and the song should be replayed. Or, if you notice it early, you can go ahead and very quickly restart the song if it's within the first couple seconds of the song. If a match is tied at match point, such as a score of 3 to 3 and a best of 7, or 4 to 4 and a best of 9, uh, the tiebreaker map must be played. Generally, tiebreaker maps allow you to play with no mods or the tournament free mod selection. Read the tournament rules for more information. When a player has won a match, after saying good games to your opponent, you can close your lobby using the MP close command. This is different than just exiting a match normally because for tournament streaming software, it helps reduce the amount of shown matches. So do the staff a favor and run the command instead of just leaving the lobby. However, make absolutely sure that your match is complete so you don't have to make a second lobby, have a second MP link, invite the player a second time, and then submit both of the links. Once you've done this, most tournaments will have a place to submit your score. Once you've copied the link, you can go to your tournament's result links channel and submit the link. Some tournaments will allow you to submit the link. However, if you want to help staff a little bit, you can put the names of the players along with the scores achieved. For this example, I will go ahead and just say I won four to zero. Afterwards, you should be all set. You should wait to see if bracket has been updated with the uh, correct match results and contact the tournament uh, organizers if there are any issues. With that, you should be good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Good luck.